If you search for a soldering iron with hot air supply, the 8786D could be a nice option for you. And it's less than $100 on Amazon. So let's check what it can and what it can't. For transparency, I just want to let you know that this one I bought on my own. So this is not a marketing device, I'm using it for my own purpose. So if you like the device, I will give you a link on Amazon where you can buy it and support my channel for doing more reviews. What I found interesting on Amazon is that this device here is a European version and there's another brand for US which is looking like exactly the same but has a different name and I cannot pronounce it. So I just talk about the US version of it because I don't know how to pronounce it. When you open your box you will figure out that you have six tips inside and four reductions for the hot air. Also it comes with a roll of soldering tin. If you need it, it's nice to have. When it comes to the power of the iron, that's not quite clear to me. In the Amazon description it says 740 watt and 750 at the same time, so that's really confusing to me. And also the whole number doesn't make sense to me. It's quite a lot and I don't see that it, that high power consumption can go into that little iron here. So I don't know what it has and I don't know what the number should mean but we will check in the technical part how good it is. The solar station has three power switches so one for the whole device and one for soldering and one for hot air. I don't know why we have three for me it would be okay to have only two, but if you have any idea what we can do with the third one just give it to me in the comments, I'm really curious about that explanation. So what else do we have? We have also an ESD connection, but that one is on the back, so you have to put the cable on the back and to bring it to the front when you're soldering, but for me it's okay because I don't connect that one really frequently when I'm soldering, so maybe I have to bring a bit more quality into that what I'm doing. The soldering iron itself will be controlled over the switch and over two buttons. Uh, with these buttons you can increase or decrease the temperature for the soldering iron. Let's have a look what is inside of the handheld. The handheld is like every solder iron with a resistor and this is connected to the soldering tip. And in this case I like the solution a lot because the tip itself is not that small so it gives you a long area where it's connected to the heater. But what I think is a bit of disadvantage is the size of the heater. It's around 3 mm and this is a bit small and compared to that what you get in a professional soldering station. The reason is that this gives you a thermal capacitance which is really close to the soldering point so you only have the tip in between and you don't need to power the whole thing if it's in use. And this could be a bit disadvantage but we will check in the practical part. Another point what I don't like but this is also common use in other soldering stations for a lot of more money is that we have an iron screw on the back of the soldering iron so if everything is hot we cannot change the tip because we will burn our fingers. That's not nice. So I don't like this, but it's really often seen. So it's not really a disadvantage in compared to other ones. But I have one more look to that what you get. We have six tips and three of them are peaked and one of them are just like flat or anything else. I personally just use peak ones, but it's up to everyone itself. What you can do now with that, if you don't use them, you can put them into the holder of the handheld, but it's not really made for this, so <laughs> I don't know what they thought about it. It's just not holding, so just put it back there where you get it from. Okay, let's make a practical test. How good is a soldering station? What I'm normally interested in is when I want to solder something and I have a crown plane, and this is really bad to, to solder because it gives you a big thermal resistance or a big thermal capacitance so you have to heat it up. For this test I'm using an old electronic device where I have a connection to a battery so this is also hard to solder and for this I'm using a really tiny tip and just to check how long it takes or what temperature I need to heat it up. The first try I made was with 300 degrees Celsius 
or 570 degree Fahrenheit and it doesn't work. The next try with 350 degree and 660 degree Fahrenheit but it also doesn't work at the last thing with 400 and there it begin to melt and that is equal to 750 degree Fahrenheit. So what we see that on a practical test it's quite good usable. So it's still under the limit of 475 degree which is the maximum of the soldering station and I think the test is a bit stressful for the station. So on the technical side that's quite nice. What I figured out during the test or during my time I use it is that the quality itself of the handheld is not that valuable like you have it in a more expensive station. So you have something that when you want to fix something that it's not really holding and it's a bit flexible. Also the touch of the, of the handheld itself is not so, give you not so a quality feeling. But I think for the price this is really good. So let's come to the other part of it, the hot air, and that was the reason why I choose that station because I personally like a lot to solder with hot air. It's much more easy if you have components which are complexer. To control the hot air you have four reductions for the outlet of the air. You have one main switch to power on or off the air. Then you have two buttons to increase or decrease the temperature. You have one wheel to control the airflow speed. And then a bit special you have a button for hot and cold temperature. I don't know if I saw this on another device before but I also don't have an idea where to use it because the deceleration or the degradation of the temperature is a bit slow that it could not also help you to cool something down. So I don't know what the purpose is of that button but if you have an idea please also write it down in the comments I would be glad to know that. What I don't like at the hot air is the quality again. It's a plastic part and this is not really handy to use. It's just the feeling of no value things you have in your hand. But it's just to be fair, it's a $90 device. So we don't want to be that hard. What can we do on technical side now to check how good it is in performing? The first thing is to have a look how fast it's heating up and for me this is comparable with a professional station I have often in my labs so this is quite good and what I always think tricky or what I always find as a challenge for such a device is when you want to desolder a resistor in a field of other resistors that you can set the airspeed and the temperature that the rest of the parts are not flying away and you can heat up the device you want to heat up and pick it at the end out. This works quite good in the practical part. So let's check how it's done with an IC. Do we get enough temperature on that? And we still see it's working quite good. So I think for that what we do at home it's quite enough to test it here. Let's come to a conclusion at the end. What do we get for $90? And I think this is quite good for the value we spend. So we get a nice soldering station with hot air and we get enough tips to do what we need to do. And also for the hot air the reductions are enough to do whatever you like to. For a professional environment I would recommend a different brand with a bit more quality but for just doing your do-it-yourself products or just repair something in your garage or in your basement that's quite a nice machine so if you like it I give you the link as I said in the description where you can support my channel for giving you another reviews of products and yeah I would also be interested to get some feedback from you so write down in the comment if you like that video if you want to see something more in review or if you see, want to see something else, give me a comment. I would appreciate it a lot and see you next time. Goodbye.